Hey, welcome to Tent Talk, the Farmer's Market Podcast. This is a show all about farmer's markets. Whether you're a farmer's market manager, a farmer, or a food maker selling at farmer's markets, or just a curious farmer's market shopper, this is the podcast for you. Welcome to the first episode of Tent Talk. On today's episode, we want you guys to get to know us. We'll be talking about how we came to be a part of the farmer's market world and why we stayed. I'm Bridget Myers. I'm one of your hosts, and I've spent years as an on-site farmer's market manager for San Diego Markets. I've done it all from pulling permits to hauling tents to social media marketing. And I'm Justine marzoni Mead. I'm a hot sauce maker and event facilitator for the Intense Conference. And I'm Kat Fields-White. I'm still a hands-on market manager. I lift my share of barricades, but I'm also the director of San Diego Markets and the founder of Intense Business. So Justine and I are podcast nerds, and of course we wanted to make a podcast about Farmer's Market because that's the world that we live in. But Kat, tell us why you let us do this crazy idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought it would be fun. I think you girls have me convinced about podcasts. Still going to be a reader first, but I'm liking this podcast thing. And we just think managing markets is great. We've had so much fun with all the vendors and the farmers and, of course, the shoppers. We're excited to share business tips with the folks that participate in farmers markets and resources and welcome in other people that are in the farmers markets world. But I think it's also going to be kind of fun to give shoppers a little bit of a peek to what the farmers market looks like from inside the tent. Even when I talk to my friends who are real foodies and real involved in fresh food, they're always surprised when I'm whining a little bit about the regulatory agencies or telling them how impossible it is to deal with 200 type A entrepreneurs on the street on <laughs> Saturday. They say, oh, I never thought about that being part of the farmer's market. So I think that'll be fun to share. Yeah, absolutely. I know when I tell my friends, oh, I work at farmer's markets, they go, oh, what do you sell at the market? It's like, no, we run <laughs> farmer's markets. What do you, someone runs it? What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They don't have to show up and go into their spots. And it's like, no, you have to ask the city first if you can be there. <laughs> and then there's about a million other things you have to do. <laughs> exactly right. And yeah. you have to plan it out. It's so funny when people say, don't people just show up and go to a space? No, not we so much. We wish they would. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although I guess there are markets where things like that happen. Yes. I've, I've heard from vendors about markets where you show up and get in line and then the first one in picks their space. It's so confusing to me. I want to talk to that market manager, yeah. please, because I'd like to call know us, the system. Please call you. us. <laughs> Intensebusiness.com. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so Justine, how did you get started and how did we how did we rope you into this world of ours here? Wow. It's funny because my background is not in food at all. Um, I was in academia, my background was in education, and I was an adjunct professor for a couple of years. A natural segue into <laughs> hot sauce making. Yeah. <laughs> so I was doing that. Um, my husband, Dave, he and uh, his family owned an auto body shop, mm -hmm. and him and his brother were working together, and they got to a point where they wanted to go their separate ways. So Dave was like, all right, this is my chance. Like, I get to do my own thing. And so his first idea was to start a food truck. He was like, let's start a food truck and move to Brooklyn. And I was like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, What's plan B? Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me another option. Um, and so we had been kind of just as a fun thing, making hot sauce together on the weekends. And he's in a band and he would sell his hot sauce at his band shows. And um, so he was like, how about we do this for real? And I was like, okay. So I just started doing internet searches, like how to start a small business. <laughs> and That's a couple pages. Yeah. Of, <laughs> it was like an immediate, yeah. 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 immediate information overload. So um, I was lucky enough to stumble upon the Vendor 101 class, which is run by oh. Kat mm -hmm. and Bridget in yeah. San Diego Markets. And so about four years ago, I ended up in uh, the classroom. That's just down the way from where we're recording this episode <laughs> and um I ended up we ended up getting into San Diego markets and so um that was kind of how we got into that and sort of a circuitous path but <laughs> yeah. led to where you needed to be it was yeah. good I actually came from a food background yeah well a lot of different backgrounds I think we counted up my my <laughs> serial entrepreneurship <laughs> ventures the other day and the Came list was long. The list was long. We're going to have an episode later about the red balloon and jazzercise <laughs> and all the different entrepreneurial okay, I avenues Kat has things. taken. Yeah, true. It's true. But for the, the last decade or two before I got into farmer's markets, definitely working in food. Owned mm -hmm. restaurants, did a, had a marketing agency for restaurants, had a small publication focused on independent restaurants, worked for a construction company that mostly built restaurants. So you see oh. there's a theme here. <laughs> there's a theme. But especially when I was working with the small restaurants, 
I got to know a lot of farmers because we were looking for great producers. And so I knew chefs, I knew farmers, and it just happened that I arrived at a point where I lived in an amazing downtown neighborhood that had everything I could want except a grocery store. And so I thought, hey, let's start a farmer's market. It's kind of like, hey, my dad has a barn. Let's do a play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, I didn't know anything really about running farmer's markets. And and I think I probably do some things a little differently than some oh. market managers just mm-hmm. because I kind of made it up as I went along. I but think I, that's the best thing about starting your own business and being completely naive because if you mm-hmm. knew all the things that you had to figure out, you wouldn't have started it in the first place. Right. Yeah, never absolutely. would have done it. And I, and I think also there's a lot of <laughs> never folks that Never would have done it. Yeah, never would have done it. Way more complicated than I thought. It. Yeah. <laughs> but you also avoid that, oh, we've always done it this way thing. Yeah. So yeah. if I make a decision to do something because I think it's the smartest marketing move, I don't have somebody telling me, well, that's not really what it's about. Yeah. Because yeah, I think absolutely. that is what it's about. Running farmer's markets is all about relationships and marketing and helping farmers and food makers stay in business by helping them relate better to their customers. Yeah, that can make a market stand out if they build those relationships for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. How'd you wind up here, Bridget, other than an accident of birth? Oh, yeah. I was just <laughs> born right into it, actually. Cat <laughs> uh, is my mom. So there's that relationship. And there's also the boss employee relationship, which has been going on almost as long as the mother daughter <laughs> relationship. Almost. I was busting tables in my mom's restaurant. Um, my sister and I both were before my 10th birthday. So uh, we have a lot of years working together experience. And I kind of drifted off my own and managed a different restaurant that had nothing to do with her for a few years. And then she had this crazy and idea. you taught yoga? Don't I taught yoga. you haven't had a lot uh, of world <laughs> lives. I worked at the mall and I taught yoga. So those are my non-food related jobs that I've had. Uh, but I did work at the restaurant publication with you, which was so fantastic. And that really um, got me even more passionate about food and, you know, food system and restaurants and all of that, and then ran a restaurant for many years in Phoenix. And then um, she had this crazy idea to start a farmer's market. And we had no, our family didn't have experience with farmer's markets. Yeah, food, but not the market side of it. And coming from Arizona, the farmer's market scene, at least back then, and even still right now, um, is not you know such a big scene just because it's a hard growing season there. It's so hot. The markets are seasonal, but they're open from October to April because it gets up to 120 degrees in the summer. And so you can't grow and you can't shop outside with the, when it's that hot. So it wasn't really anything that was ever on my mind. And she moved out to San Diego and started a market and then took over a market and then started another market. So she had some employment opportunities for me <laughs> that were just too good to pass up and um, moved my family out here and started working for San Diego Markets. And it really changed the way I ate and changed the way my family ate and how we related to farmers and uh, where our food came from. And it's just really been um, you know, just a great experience. Thanks, Mom. You're welcome. <laughs> how many times has she fired you? Oh, um... <laughs> Not even one time from this job. That's right. Not, <laughs> not this, not job. One this from job. This job. Yeah. The maybe, restaurant. Maybe three, four times from the restaurant. <laughs> yeah. A couple of my friends got fired. You know, it was a rite of passage. <laughs> it was. It was. Have you worked in the news yet? Yeah. Yeah. I, I have. Have you gotten fired yet? <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, all good. It was a learning experience. I have a nice work ethic, I think, because... Actually, I have people come back to me, friends of Bridget's from high school that come back that I had been their first employer and they've come back and said, oh my gosh, you gave me such a good work ethic and I've been able to advance in my career because of things that I learned bussing tables for you. So, oh, cool. yeah, so that, that's gratifying. Yeah. I always like that. Well, it is interesting, you know, both of you are, you know, serial entrepreneurs. What's kept you in the farmer's market business for so long? Because you just celebrated your 10-year anniversary we of did. your first yeah. farmer's market. Happy I have to tell you that most of my family is utterly amazed by that. Usually after about <laughs> five years in one business, if I can't sell it, I have to kill it <laughs> just because yes, my attention does. wanders. <laughs> so it's pretty incredible that this has kept my attention for 10 years. And I think part of it's because the whole environment of farmer's markets keeps changing. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, there always fresh. is some new things to learn. The regulations keep changing. I've shifted around a little bit in what I do in this business, so I'm still a market manager at least one day a week mm-hmm. at our big market, but I also have gotten into an education program. Um, we really saw a need for teaching prospective vendors what it took to get started rather than having them kind of piece it together and then spend their life savings in so a year or two learn. figuring it yeah. out. Yeah, Waste a lot of time. Yeah. yeah, so like you, there's a lot of people that have taken that Vendor 101 class since 2010, and I feel like that's been a big benefit to people, whether they take that information and open a market business mm-hmm. or whether they take that information and at the end of that one day say, whoa, this is lots more complicated than I thought it was. Maybe I'm going to back away slowly. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good outcome. 
come to that class too. I'm go so teach we've yoga. saved some people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be a yoga teacher now. Yeah. yeah. And and the market itself is fun because it's almost like a special project every day, even though it's three times a week. That's you know the markets that we run. When that curtain goes up at the beginning of each market, each one's a little bit different because there's a different mix of farmers and vendors and there's a different group of customers. We've had markets in a variety of neighborhoods and each of those has been a little bit different. Uh, So yeah, it's kept me interested because we just keep moving and shifting. I've served on some boards, California Alliance of Farmers Markets. I'm still with them. uh, Leadership Forum for Farmers Market Coalition. Yeah, so it seems like there's fresh material all the time, whereas like a restaurant is so great, and but you, there's only like so many things you can change when you're running a restaurant. You can change the menu around, and that's always great, but it's like it's kind of repetitive. After a while, you figure yeah. it out, and mm-hmm. once I figured it out, I'm bored. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. It's really good for some people. I have not found that that is what you enjoy doing, the same thing over and over, so it's nice in the farmer's like market it business. Keeps changing. And I like the classes. The education part has really been um, a drive for me, too, as well. Like I love getting in the classroom at Vendor 101 and talking to new people about starting their businesses answering questions and then I really like watching them like develop their product and apply at the markets even if it's not with our markets but other markets around town and just seeing them and their products and then seeing them you know develop into these great farmers market businesses and either move into wholesale or open up a brick and mortar or stay in those markets for so long and just be such a good success story it's really nice thing to watch and yeah, we've babies. got an episode coming up, I think, where we're talking to some people who have been in farmer's markets for a long time, have expanded and gone into wide distribution, uh-huh. Costco or boutique retail stores or really wide wholesale, but they're still in the farmer's markets yeah, because yeah. they find that part of the experience valuable too. Yeah, the connection and the family feeling of it is just so great there. Yeah, and there is this performative aspects of farmer's markets. It's right. really yeah. fun. Like you were saying, you know, it's always different and when the... Uh, when the curtain goes up, like the show must go on. <laughs> yeah. And I know my husband, Dave, he, he looks forward to the farmer's markets each week because he just gets to be on stage and he gets <laughs> to interact with those customers and make people laugh and make relationships. And it's about selling food and getting people good products, but it's also about, you know, making those connections and, and mm-hmm. getting in your community and, I think that's what makes us really enjoy the farmer's markets because we're making new friends and we're seeing people that we know. And it's um, being a small business owner can get kind of lonely because sure. people don't understand that so much goes on behind the scenes. But when yeah. you're at the farmer's market, you you know, you have all those other vendors there and you have all you, know, you get to see your people. Exactly. Yeah. And I feel like Dave has like the perfect farmer's market vendor personality <laughs> he does, because absolutely. he's so outgoing and he can really strike up a conversation with like a grandma that's there, you know, like just shopping around with, you know, 20 bucks in her pocket or like the hipsters that are walking around trying to just take selfies with everything. He can really <laughs> talk to every single type of yeah. person that's there. And that's what's great about the farmer's market is that you get to like find your people and your people are a lot of different kinds of people. Yeah. Oh, and absolutely. it's you know, nice to have variety there. So it's never a dull moment. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. always surprising to see who buys your product. And oftentimes mm-hmm. it's not the person that yeah. you expect it to be. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's true. So many different kinds of people. And we found as we've gotten into this education thing, you know, we expanded into the intense conference because traveling around, my very favorite thing to do is go to farmer's markets. If I have an off day and yeah. I'm on the road and I'm in Seattle or I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, or I'm in London, um, I'm hunting down those farmer's markets yeah. so that yeah. I can be there. And so realizing that different kinds of people were at different areas of the country and different parts of the world in farmer's markets, the excitement of bringing all those people together and having them recognize each other. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like when you go somewhere and you find this long lost cousin or something, I can uh-huh. you're my like, people, yeah. you yeah, understand me. Spirits. And so the conference has given folks that experience, the folks that are in the farmer's markets. Yeah. It's so great to talk to people and like see how their markets work in different areas. And there's always a lot of differences, but then there's always those core similarities. Absolutely. It's like, oh, we can talk about tents. We can talk about like <laughs> dogs at the market. We can talk about vendor personalities. We can talk about farmer issues, you know, when they're having their problems with land, whether it's a drought or too much rain or like a snowy or season. Or policy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, farm policy, policy issues. Yeah, exactly. No mm-hmm. matter how different they are, they're always the same. Yeah. And no vendor in any part of the world wants to move more than 10 feet. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. They're all type A. No matter who right. we are, we've noticed. <laughs> well, what's so, just talking about other farmers markets, like what's your favorite market that you've visited? I know you've met, probably all of us have gone on vacation and just sought out those farmers markets in the neighborhood. So like, what's something that comes to mind? Oh gosh, the Bastille Market in Paris has my heart. Of course. Of course. <laughs> Go back there again and again. I also love the standing markets. I just came back from Vancouver and Granville Island Market is wonderful and Borough Market in London and uh, the Quesa does a wonderful market at the Ferry Building in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. What about you, Justine? Well, I... 
I'm going to talk about my hometown market. I love the Little Italy market. It's yeah, the, of I mean, I'm from San Diego, and and this was that was like the first market that I was like, oh, this is a thing. Like, yeah, no, I really got it. Um, yeah. But I'm going to Madison, Wisconsin this weekend, and I'm really oh. excited to check out um, the the market there because it's the oldest. That's the one of the oldest, oldest markets in oh. the country. Yeah, yeah, and it's huge. Wow. It's right at the capital, so I'm really excited to to check that one out. Wow, that sounds like a lot of fun in like old like farming country. I feel like those yeah. markets just have yeah. a certain like a special feel. We do like really urban like downtown markets, so our, it's we're not living in farmland, and so it's nice to you know go to those markets that are like oh this is like. Well, they're Country's surrounded right. by farmers, but Madison's also a big university community, so you yeah, can, yeah it's, that'll be a great market to see. I haven't been to Madison, but it's on my list. Yeah, yeah. I know my favorite is the Portland Farmer's Market, of course. Uh, it's just like my jam. I love it, and the, being in the park with the big trees, and that huge market on Saturday when there's like a million vendors there, and they have music every couple of feet, like little banjo players and stuff. I love the feeling of that, and I love those big markets, um, but I went to a market in Cherry Creek in Denver, and it was so, oh. it was like tiny. There was like 25 vendors there and like a couple food trucks and stuff but they had really great farmers and it just seemed like a really nice community it was in like a parking lot somewhere and I just like those little like those little neighborhood markets like I love the huge ones and I love it when it's a huge deal and a million people come but I like it that like sometimes you can just find a little farmer's market on the corner somewhere and yeah. they're trying and it's a good market and they have a good balance there and the people are happy and there's kids and yeah and if I it's like that curated scene. properly yeah you know, 20 or 30 booths you can get everything you need when you're doing your weekly shopping exactly yeah there was produce there was grocery items I got like the best cold brew coffee I've ever had <laughs> wow. and then you know just like a couple food trucks and stuff so people have stuff to eat while they're shopping and it was great yeah. Okay, my podcast nerds, my guides <laughs> along this podcast road. What's A next? Wide world of podcasts. <laughs> well, we're really excited because we're going to talk to a bunch of different people, but they all have to do with the farmer's market community. So we have market managers that we're going to interview, farmers, people that do marketing for farms. Um, Charlotte Smith, I think, is our next yes. guest. And yeah, we're, we're so, so excited. excited. We love her so much. She has so much. She's like a bank of information. She is a guru when it comes to marketing your farm and, and selling. And also a dairy farmer. And a dairy I mean, farmer. I love that in I mean, between <laughs> doing all this really sophisticated social media and marketing stuff, yeah. um, in between that, mm -hmm. she's out there feeding the cows. Exactly. <laughs> she's getting in the mud with her boots. So we love that too. And she's really interesting. So we're excited to talk to her. We're going to talk to other farmer's market vendors that are here in San Diego with us, but then also everywhere else. So we love it. We love talking to other market managers and farmers and food makers from you know across the country and beyond. So we're really excited to talk to a lot of those people um and if you so. have if you have ideas or you have questions or you think we should interview you please yeah. let us know <laughs> Raise your we're, hand. I mean, we're starting from scratch on this i know like bridget said we're we're podcast nerds but we've never done this before <laughs> we've never done a podcast yeah we should say that we've never actually <laughs> been podcast on a podcast listening nerds, yes <laughs> yeah, we so listen to podcasts and we love that community it brings so send us an email at connect at intenseconference.com that's i-n-t-e-n-t-s conference and, yeah. and you can find us on like Instagram. We have a lot of ways to reach us. We're at Intense Business on Instagram. So you can message us there or comment on our posts. Um, you can follow us on Facebook. And then check out our website, IntenseBusiness.com, because we have a lot of really great information on there. We send out an email newsletter every few weeks with really great blogs pertaining to how to increase the income stream at your market, um, how to manage your market better, what farmers can do to increase sales. So lots of really great information in our newsletter. So the next episode is coming right up. Yes. We're yeah. so excited. Two we're weeks? Excited. Yeah. Yeah. Every two weeks. Every yeah, two every weeks. two weeks we'll be here. So yeah, let us know what you think. And thanks for listening along. Um, you, and also please leave us a review on iTunes and tell us how you like today's episode. And be sure to subscribe to our podcast so you don't miss the next episode. This podcast is produced by Intense Business, where passion meets profit. Today's episode was recorded and edited by Justine Marzonini. Original music by David Mead. Special thanks to Catfields White and San Diego Markets.